probably going to be the most simplest one for you to answer, but what if you're wrong? Well, what if I'm wrong? I mean, anybody could be wrong. We could all be wrong about the flying spaghetti monster and the pink unicorn and the flying teapot. Um, you happen to have been brought up, I would presume, in the Christian faith. You know what it's like not to believe in a particular faith because you're not a Muslim, you're not a Hindu. Why aren't you a Hindu? Because you happen to have been brought up in America, not in India. If you'd been brought up in, Indo in India, you'd be a Hindu. If you were brought up in, in um, Denmark in the time of the Vikings, you'd be believing in Wotan and Thor. If you were brought up in, in classical Greece, you'd be believing in, in Zeus. If you were brought up in Central Africa, you'd be believing in the great juju up the mountain. I mean, there's no particular reason to pick on the Judeo-Christian God in which by the sheerest accident you happen to have been brought up and, and ask me the question, what if I'm wrong? What if you're wrong about the great juju at the bottom of the sea? Now, it was very obvious to me that Richard Dawkins was thinking on the fly there that he was taken off guard and the question morphed from the question the girl asked to a question about religious pluralism. Um, what the girl was, I think, trying to express, Cameron, was Pascal's wager, so that she would be very happy with the question posed by Dawkins at the end, what if you were wrong? And she would say that when I estimate the risk rewards involved, the risk of being wrong is much, much greater for the atheist than it is for the theist. Because if the atheist is wrong, he risks forfeiting eternal happiness and eternal life. Whereas if the theist is wrong, uh, all he forfeits is the pleasures of sin during this lifetime. So that um, the risks of being wrong, she's arguing, are much, much greater for the atheist, and that should give the atheist significant pause, I think, before confidently expounding his worldview. Now, what Dawkins does, as I say, is to try to shift the question to the question of religious pluralism that says that the beliefs that a person typically holds are the beliefs of the culture in which he was raised. Well, of course, that's true sociologically, but so what? That doesn't prove that therefore your views are false. To think that it does is to commit the genetic fallacy, which is trying to invalidate a point of view by showing how the person came to hold it. And that is a logical fallacy. If somebody says, well, the only reason that you believe that democracy is the best form of government is because you were raised in 20th century America, well, that might be true, but that doesn't prove that your belief is therefore false. Moreover, the argument is, again, it's another one of these sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Uh, if Richard Dawkins had been raised in Pakistan, he would likely be a theist. He'd likely be a Muslim. Does that therefore mean that his belief in atheism is unjustified and therefore false? Well, obviously not. So the very argument that he's using against uh, theism, namely its cultural relativity, uh, bounces back on him and would make his own uh, atheistic beliefs unjustified and false.